Hey folks, how's it going? So I've been making a bit of progress on this Nurgle Troll uh, conversion uh, type piece that I've been doing. So I wanted to show you what I've done so far and where I plan to go with it just before I move too far along uh, and kind of lose track of the, the work that I've been doing. Uh, so since the the first video, I've done a little bit more of the I guess Nurgleifying uh, this uh, troll's skin, uh, adding some more of these open wounds and boils, uh, all the the nastiness that comes with them. Uh, I've actually added a bunch of parts. Uh, I got a, a box set, a Warhammer box set. It was the Nurgle Rotbringers, uh, the Putrid Blight Kings. Uh, I'll probably do a, a series of videos on them uh, at some point, but I've, I've started putting them together anyway and I noticed there was a hell of a lot of spare parts, so I've used uh, a few bits and pieces on here uh, from that kit and it's just given me some opportunity for, for adding detail and those sort of things. So here on the, the elbow is actually a shoulder pad uh, from that kit. I've just stuck it on the, the elbow there and turned it into like a, an elbow pad. There's still some green stuff work to do uh, to add a, a strap onto that um, that will go around his arm uh, just to show that it's you know it's holding it on there. Uh, similarly, it's a, a shoulder pad from the kit as well. I've just uh, attached it up here. I wasn't too happy with the... It was almost just like a, a plain uh, kind of chain mail uh, shoulder pad going on there with some leather straps. Uh, so I put one of these, um, a, sh a large shoulder pad from, from that kit uh, on here and again I've still to do some green stuff work to um, add a strap uh, onto there. And that's pretty much all the work I've done on the, the body of the troll uh, itself. But moving up to, I've decided to call this uh, section up here the crow's nest. Uh, I thought it was kind of, you know, the best way to describe it. Um, so moving up. I've added um, a bell, uh, it's actually a bell from the, the Putrid uh, Blight Kings kit uh, that I didn't use for the, the miniatures from that kit so I've decided it was kind of a, a good place under there uh, for that to attach to so it's like this thing will you know rattle around inside of the, the three posts and clang around and just make a hell of a lot of noise. Uh, that seems to be a, a recurring theme, uh, theme Sorry, through Nurgle stuff is that they, they have a lot of bells and uh, seem to like to make a lot of noise and let people know um, that they're coming in, which I kind of like because you know a lot of you know <laughs> the idea of making a hell of a, a lot of noise uh, when you're going to to battle to you know let people know that you're coming uh, might be a bad idea, but the the idea that they don't really care and they're you know confident enough to to charge into a, a battlefield making a hell of a lot of noise is pretty cool I think and shows that they're you know pretty confident in themselves, which is awesome. Uh, so the the bell is uh, under there. I've not attached that on yet. Uh, it's just kind of stuck in there. I've not glued it because I'm going to take that out just to make painting a bit easier. Uh, moving up, I added uh, one of the shields from the the kit uh, on the the front there. There was an arm attached to the back of it, but I just kind of carved that off, and I made a, a pretty cool kind of centerpiece for the front of the the crow's nest up here. As a little uh, arrowhead, uh, well, no, it wasn't an arrowhead. It was a, a spear tip, actually, um, on the bottom there. It just kind of, fit, you know, finished off the the bottom kind of nicely. Uh, that little spike down there, and uh, moving up, there's some uh, tusk uh, pl plate tusk type things uh, on the sides here. Uh, one was on a shoulder pad, and I think the other was on a helmet, um, but they looked, you know, similar enough to act as kind of uh, side pieces for the, the crow's nest up here. Uh, moving up here, I uh, cut the, these were two pincer uh, things off of uh, a claw-like arm from the, the same kit. I just cut the tips off of those and put uh, a tiny piece, um, some of the, the tubing that you see on here uh, is actually the, the middle sections of uh, cotton buds or Q-tips, uh, you call them over in the States. I take the, I cut the, the, you know, the cotton wool ends off and I just have these, uh, it's a really good source for, you know, cheap plastic tubing. Uh, so I just cut really thin slices, I don't know how well it's going to uh, focus on here. Uh, come on. You can kind of see it in there. Um, there's just little bits of, uh, of plastic tubing uh, around the bottom of those just to give them like a, a finished off kind of look. Uh, so they weren't just stuck on there. It looks like they're actually you know held in with uh, a mount or something along those lines. Uh, in the back, 
Uh, I think this was just a plain cross before. Uh, I can't remember if I'd uh, even shown this. I think I did. The idea is to have a, a standard hanging up the back here. Uh, and then on the, the ends of this, I just put two of these like mace uh, balls. Um, they were from various weapon bits from the, the Blight King's kit uh, I'd left over. These antler uh, pieces were on a helmet, I think. I just cut those off and attached them onto uh, the side here. And then this kind of, uh, the you know, the, the arrangement up the top here was the end. I think it was the end of a weapon or something, uh, like a big heavy kind of counterweight to an axe or something like that. Uh, but I just cut that off again of the, the initial weapon and put it up top here. This is a, a kind of cap to this uh, the this standard uh, you know uh, holder, the banner holder or whatever. Uh, so that is what's going on with the, the main dude here so far. Uh, I used, you, you, in the, the Blight King's kit you get a hell of a lot of extra body parts um, and weapons alike. And uh, I used, uh, you get like, I can't remember, I think it's like four or five uh, extra fronts uh, to bodies. You don't get the, the legs or anything, but that worked out quite well uh, for the narrative of this, this whole piece overall. Uh, so I just took one of the, the front of the bodies and uh, attached a couple of spare arms onto here. Well, one's an arm. Uh, one is a, a tentacle uh, wrapping around there. On uh, this side, it's actually an arm with like a growth coming out of it that looks like he's holding on to a staff. Uh, so that worked out quite well for him, kind of uh, having a, you know pointing in the direction that he wanted this uh, big troll to go, uh, which is kind of cool. And then I took uh, this crook sort of section here uh, was actually the the support or the you know the staff to hold the the bell. Uh, and that's in here. Uh, one of the, the putrid Blight Kings would have been carrying that around. Um, but I just cut it up, I uh, shaped it a little bit and uh, kind of bent it around to make it fit uh, nicely into uh, this tentacle that's going around here. There were a couple of details on the end here. I think this tentacle was actually holding on to a couple of bells. Um, but I just cut those off and shaped it all up and it looks like he's gripping onto this, uh, this crook here. Um, I've drilled a couple of holes into both the crook and this plastic bead and attached, uh, just cut little bits of paper clips and um, attached that on there um, and then added again some of those little um, slices of uh, the plastic uh, tube from Q-tips and uh, made little kind of metal uh, cuffs or bracers or whatever uh, that attach onto this, this wooden crook here. Uh, I'm going to paint all this up, obviously, the the, the sections in here, the cuffs, uh, to look like metal. Uh, and then I'm going to, with this uh, plastic bead, uh, I'm actually going to make it look like some kind of magic orb, maybe encased in like a little metal cage uh, or something along those lines. Uh, so it's like, you know, there's a, a metal support kind of suspending it in the middle of this crook. And he's, uh, this dude is maybe using it to, to control the armies or to, you know, con at least control this... Uh, the Nurgle Troll uh, that's kind of carrying him around. Uh, up top here there's just uh, a little spike from uh, just my bits box from uh, another kit that I'd hacked up. Uh, the heads as well, uh, I think I got four or five spare heads so I just chucked one of them uh, on this dude. Uh, one with a, a huge kind of menacing looking grin on him, I thought that was kind of cool. Rather than just a helmet with no kind of character behind it. Um, I decided to use the one that looked the, the meanest and, and ugliest, I guess, for this dude. Uh, around the back, as I said, there, there were only spare fronts to these bodies, uh, no spare backs. So all I've done is cut up a whole bunch of uh, sprue and uh, carved it all down to fit in there. Uh, just to, Really just to bulk out the body, because uh, I've got a whole bunch of uh, green stuff work to do. Uh, around the back here to finish it all off, but just so I wasn't using a hell of a lot of green stuff I just cut up uh, little bits of sprue to kind of fill in uh, Gaps and uh, you know it makes it a bit more solid overall as well and gives you something to work with rather than just a big Cavity in the back here that you then have to fill with green stuff wait for it to dry before you can do the skin layer and all this sort of thing uh, So the idea uh, is that he's the the big fat kind of overweight uh, controller dude of this this troll. Uh, he's not gonna have any legs uh, so that's the idea behind the 
the need for him to have this, you know, this uh, big troll carting him around. Uh, he's actually going to have no legs, and I'll, I'll kind of sculpt all that in uh, to to make sense. So he's just this kind of, you know, blob with arms, basically. Maybe the the Nurgle kind of rot is taking over the, all of his legs, and they've just disintegrated to nothing. Uh, so I'll sculpt all that in. Uh, and he's actually sitting on, uh, this is one of the, uh, I guess this is the, the removable insert for the crow's nest up here, is going to be this throne uh, that I've started. This is just from little bits of uh, plastic card. I've just kind of carved up a whole bunch of texture into them and uh, made these this uh, kind of throne uh, that he's going to sit on. Uh, this isn't finished either. Uh, I've got some, uh, I'm going to put like, a, it's going to look like a metal band almost around all of the the bottom here just to tidy that up. Uh, these are going to look like wooden planks uh, on the bottom here and then this is kind of going to be the the platform where he sits on. I've still to, I'm going to sculpt some maybe like fur uh, throws or, or blanket type things on here just to give the idea that it's you know uh, make it a bit more comfortable I guess for this uh, dude to sit on uh, but he sits uh, quite nicely with all the the, um, the sprue that I've packed in in the back here it gives quite a nice uh, platform as well to uh, fix him properly onto here uh, obviously after the the green stuff uh, throws have been put down so he's going to sit on there. Uh, as I said, this is like a, a removable insert for the, the crow's nest, but I will try and put this in here without it falling. Um, to show you how it looks when it's all uh, in the top there. So that is uh, just to give you a rough idea um, how it's going to look when he's actually sat in there. Uh, overall, it kind of comes up to about the, the height of my hand. Which is uh, you know getting pretty tall, but I think it uh, makes for a pretty interesting kind of focal point or a centerpiece to an army or or you know just a, a display of of miniatures. Uh, so he's uh, up in the top there, as I say, kind of give you an idea of it all the way around. Um, I've still got a bunch of uh, little detail work to do. Uh, I've still to finish off uh, the the standard up here. I'm going to put like uh, standard. Uh, ragged sort of standard hanging down uh, just as a, a bit of a backdrop for the, the top here a um, bunch of uh, just general little little detail bits and pieces left over to do, I'm going to have some stuff hanging down from the, the sides here as well um, yeah and just a, a bunch of uh, finishing up before I move on to um, the painting uh, and also I'm going to cut this, I think I mentioned this in the last video but I'm going to cut this base off that came with this Reaper uh, ogre and uh, or troll, sorry, and then uh, just put them on a, a standard uh, round base, uh, round lip base, just so it ties in with the the rest of the miniatures uh, that I plan to do. So cut all that off and and put them on here, and make a a nicer base for them. I think is the the idea. So uh, here you go. That is uh, an overall look at the work so far. As I say, it's just a a few bits and pieces uh, sculpting wise left to do. Uh, and then I can get on to painting him. Uh, I still don't have a name for this dude, I've just called him, uh, you know, Nurgle Troll so far, or uh, this dude so far. So, um, if anyone has any suggestions uh, for what these two characters could be called, feel free to shoot them down in the comments. That'd be awesome to have, uh, you know, viewer input, I guess, on, on naming some of these things. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. I'm really enjoying uh, working on this. I worked on this... Uh, pretty much all day today just pottering about on it while watching stuff so it's been really enjoyable to do um, and it's kind of something that I've not really thought of before having this you know crow's nest platform up on top of like a big um, I guess kind of slave <laughs> troll type thing uh, but yeah it's as I say really cool project uh, so far I'm really enjoying it so I'm looking forward to finishing it up and painting it but I'll bring all of that to you uh, hopefully sometime soon uh, in a future video but until then cheers for watching and I will catch you all later goodbye